So now what we need to do is create the web app to control the tables that we want the robot to go to and we want to calibrate also the, the load sensor and move the robot around. So for that there's a very good starting point which is this tutorial from Usarion where they explain basically how to get an, a very good example up and running with their robot, uh, Rossbot. So have a look at them. I'll leave it in the, the link in the video description because it's really good and helped, uh, helped me a lot to just get, get things started. So the first thing that they, they recommend is to install Visual Studio Code and then uh, install some, some plugins. For our intended purposes, we just need this one, Live Server. So we go to Visual Studio Code and we go Live Server. And I've already installed it, okay. And now uh, we have to have a look at our code. So again, if we go to Barista Systems, you see that here we have Barista Web Server package where we have W, 3W, and we have the code here. So let's have a look in Visual Studio how this works. So file open folder. So there you go. So we have several examples that I did. So the most important one is this one, Barista HTM and Barista JS. Uh, if you want to learn more about how to develop this kind of pages and and making not that just this, but very much more complex uh, ROS related web apps, uh, have a look at, at our course in Robot Ignite Academy about it. It's really, really well made and you learn a lot. So here we are just going to have a look. So if you right click and you say open with live server, we have the server already running and it automatically opens up our HTML. So as you can see, it's really simple. We have a slider here. We have a joystick here to move the robot around. And we have just an image and the, ba and the battery status and then some buttons. These two buttons are to load the food and reset the food. So it says calibrating and reset and they are waiting for something. Then we have the tables that send, so send the command to move and then cancel, that will cancel the, the move goal, the navigation goal for these ones. But basically if you send one and then you send another one, it will cancel one. So as you can see when you press, it doesn't do anything. That's because we don't have the other side, so the the real robot or the simulation running. But we'll go around on more or less how this works. So essentially we have some divisions here and we have some buttons. And these buttons have IDs, each one for each button. So if you want to add one, you just have to add another one with a different ID. Yeah. So here we have the basic and JavaScript that we are using. We are using roslib.js and we are also using this keyboard teleob.js which uh, it's, re uh, it's the one that we are using here oh, sorry, that we are using here to move the robot around and also some other minor libraries but all of them are from Robot Web Tools. And then we have this Barista JS. So this Barista JS is the one that you'll have to do to make this work. 
So I won't go much into detail, but essentially I'm going to talk about this load button and this reset button and then move to table button. So let's have a look at the load button. So if we go to this one, you see that we get the element load food button, which is the, the one here. Yeah. And then we, when it detects a click, what it does is um, put it in warning, so yellow, and then it calls this load food. And the reset, uh, it's exactly the same, but instead of load food true, it's load food false. You can remember that for the reset service, we used only true or false, depending on what we wanted to do. So calibrate it for an object or calibrate it to reset. Yeah. So you can imagine what we what we are doing here. So if we go to the load food method, um, if we find it in here, there you go. So this load food is the one that makes it work. So we are using Roslib service and we're connecting to this load food server. So you can see here that it's load server and you say, hey, the one that we had here was load sensor calibrate server. So what's, what's the point here? So you see that here in the launch for this, that we'll talk about it in a minute, you see that here we have load start server. So let's have a look at that. Systems launch load start server. And this one is starting this load food start server. This one, this one is the one that connects the, uh, the service from the web page to the service of the class that we talked about of load, uh, load class. So here you see that we generate this server, which is called load food server. That it's the one we're using here. So we communicate with the web app with this server. And then we do a client of the other one, which is the one of the Python class that we talked about. And that way we're communicating one another. And essentially what it does is you generate this service, or you, this service client, and we call it. And that's quite it really. So if it's true, then one thing. If it's false, then another thing. And that's it. There's nothing more. So we wait for the call of the service and that's it. That's for the reset and, and calibration basically. And then for the tables, you can see that for the tables, we did something similar. So here, we use this method, which is called move to table. And these, this move to table is an action client. So it's an action client to this action server that we'll have in the future that manages the moving of this robot. So in this case, it's move to table action server. Why it's an action server? Because we need some feedback to know if it went well or not. So once we did this, so now let's test this. So to test this, we have to talk about one last thing, which is ROS W. So I just uh, showed you this launch file. This is using ROS W 
to connect to this port. So we generate the server in this port and we are giving it a web path and some other stuff. Essentially, we give it this W uh, folder, which is this one, where we it can find the index. So here we give it just a name and then the port, the folder where to find the files, and that's it. So then we need to start the ROS bridge, which connects basically ROS with web sockets. Then we start the server. And then here we are starting the load food start server, which remember that was the one that made this connection between the real load sensor and uh, our, our web server, let's say, the one that uses the web app, okay? Okay, so let's get started. So we will launch this, then we need to launch another thing, which is obviously the load sensor that will connect the Arduino directly. So we will have to launch this uh, load sensor start sub, remember? Yeah. And finally, we will have to launch another thing, which is uh, if we go here and in scripts, you see that we have a dummy move to table, which emulates having the real robot moving around with this action server, which we don't have now. Okay. We don't have it. We only have the load sensor and the web app, but we need to test how this works and how it, it behaves. Yeah. So let's, let's get going. Start barista page. Okay. Then we have to launch this uh, load sensor start sub. So I have to connect my Arduino. It's connecting to the Arduino. And finally, we are going to launch this dummy. There we go. So in theory, now we should be able to connect to this port. So let's have a look where exactly we have to connect to. So in this case, we have to connect to localhost barista HTML. Okay. This is because I'm doing it locally. When we have to do it remotely, then we will have to connect to an, an IP of the robot of whatever IP it has. Yeah. Okay. There we go. So here we have put this here. So Let's put here Rust topic list Rust topic echo whoop, echo mm, load sensor uh, info. We don't need anything more. Okay, the tray is empty. So now I place an object and it says that there's something there. So let me just put this here and let's put this here. And you see that it's publishing this. So let's calibrate. Okay. It was really fast. Object loaded. Fantastic. Now let's go to table one. It's moving. So we have this percentage bar, which is totally simulated in this case. Perfect. So we got there. Then let's go to table then. Okay. Now it's in table one. So someone picks the object up. There you go. And now the robot would auto reset himself like this reset. There you go. 
So now it says that it's empty and now it can return to, let's say, table six. And it's moving to table six. So now that the basic elements of hardware were working, uh, now was the time to test it in the real robot. But that would be a very, very, very big mistake. Because when you're developing this kind of stuff, it's very dangerous to test it in the real robot, especially in that stages of development, early stages of development, because everything goes wrong. And adding a real system, it will just add more and more uncertainty because things don't work as they should. The hardware sometimes it disconnects. Sometimes uh, you have to you have to be careful that the battery doesn't run out. Um, you can damage a two thousand euros robot. So it's a very bad idea to make early stage development in real robots. So we had to build a simulation. And that's what we're going to do in the third episode. So in the next episode, we are going to build a simulation. So we are going to build the simulation. We're going to set up the navigation and I will tell you all the modifications that you will have to do for your robot so that navigation works. And we'll also develop the plugin for the load sensor and we will develop the main pipeline that basically does everything. So someone places an object on top of the robot, it calibrates, it then takes an order of the table, goes to the table, then waits for the objects to be picked. And when they are, once they are picked, then it returns. And also everything is done with the sound feedback. So until then, keep building.